Hi guys. Okay. Turn off my email. Okay, so I have a very important live stream to tell you about because last night I was watching Instagram stories and I saw two different, I would say influencers in their own rights in the food industry talking about something that is super healthy. Um, hey Kelsey, is that you? Hi Kelsey. Kelsey, I have to, I'll have to talk about you in a second. Kelsey has a good story. Um, but I saw two super influential, meaning that they have a lot of followers, okay? They have a lot of followers in the health industry, meaning like people that wanna know how to be healthy, that were saying, um, that were saying shit about celery juice or insinuating things about celery juice. And I just have to say, celery juice is a miracle, non-drug. Yeah, right? Hi, Kelsey. Um, so I wanna talk about um, just a little behind the scenes in the gut. Like what is it, what you need to do if fruits and vegetables cause you stomach pain? Because I know that this is a real thing because a lot of my clients have had this and I was just talking to one of my friends who I'm trying to help with um, her stomach about why her stomach hurts when she eats fruit. So if you guys have ever had this, let me know and tell me if you can remember like what specific fruits or vegetables did cause your stomach to hurt or if they still do, please let me know and I'm going to tell you why because they are not the problem. <laughs> Essentially, if you wanna fast forward to the end, the end, simple answer, they're not the problem. But there are problems, okay? So we know that our gut is supposed to be healthy, and if it isn't, it means something's off. It means something's wrong. It means some things are not easily digested and broken down, okay? But the real truth of life is that there is a way to eat, and that way to eat for healing, for health, for long-term energy and vitality, and essentially, if you wanna just eat food that your body knows what to do with, instead of what it has no idea what to do with, you need to eat fruit and vegetables. It's what we have, it's like from the land, right? All this other stuff, literally, in the grocery stores, there's hardly any food. There's hardly any food in the grocery stores. I was talking to my mom or my sister, I can't even remember, and I was like, I wish that I could just go into the grocery stores, and I guess I can, right? Hi, Amanda, Amanda knows this. I could just go into the grocery stores and go down every aisle and be like, no, 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 yes, no, no. There isn't that much there, you guys. Which is why, you know, dietitians and such people, I'm not even really a dietitian anymore, say things like, don't go in the middle. You know, like don't go in the middle. There's nothing for you there except sugar addiction and feeling stuckness in the middle. But if you do, if you do know the truth, the simple truth is you got you have to eat fruits and vegetables. But this is a real thing. So sometimes people's stomach hurts. Sometimes people's gut gets mad at you when you eat these fruits and vegetables. But here's why. I mean, it's layered and it's, it can be individual, but overall, here's some reasons why. One is that because of all the other things that you've been eating and doing in your life, this could be your food life, your diet, quote diet, meaning like just stuff you eat life, or your other stressors in your environment life, um, it's been too much. Like your body is overworked and overloaded and it just doesn't have the capacity right now for you to easily break down this type of food. And it's sad, it's super sad because then our minds will tell us and make an association that, well, apples make my stomach cramp. Apples make my stomach hurt. I've multiple people tell me apples do this because do you know why? Apples are so powerful. They are a deep, deep cleansing food. And if you have gut issues, you have got to cleanse. You have to cleanse. 
and you've got overactive bacteria, perhaps, you've got viral matter, you've got too many toxins, you could have heavy metals in your gut and that's what the apples are interacting with and that's why your stomach hurts. It could be any number of things, but the main underlying point is that it's not because apples are bad and it's not because apples cause stomach pain. It's because something is inside of you and existing and living that should not be there and stressing you out that is triggering that interaction. That stuff is there, you eat an apple and t with a good intention to be healthy and feed yourself a healthy snack or whatever. And then it's like, pow, there's an interaction. There's a, a play going on in your gut, literally that you feel because of the power of the healing of the food. And then your brain tells you apples make me sick and then you stop eating apples, which are probably one of the exact foods that you need to be eating. So I remember once when I was little or younger, way younger, that I ate like a raw, I had a salad and it had like raw broccoli on it. And then I threw up like because I had the flu. It was, but it wasn't because broccoli, raw broccoli, made me throw up it was just because i was already gonna be sick but in my mind i've always made that association raw i hate raw broccoli you know i hate raw broccoli it's gross it makes me want to throw up well why because that episode happened way back when so just this is why i'm saying this because we can so easily be influenced and we can so easily um, make associations or tell ourselves stuff about food that isn't true i mean and you can't just say because one time you ate something that then something happened that that is the exact reason. But let me tell you, when it comes to the body, it takes a long time for stuff to build up and to then manifest and show up in your physical experience. And that stuff building up can be physical, emotional, and spiritual. So the first point is it's not the fruit, it's not the apples, um, but if you do, if you do feel that, if you do feel that churning of the stomach, the pain, or you get like IBS like symptoms or like diarrhea shortly after that, then um, there is a sort of like very irritated situation going on within you, probably also around you. So what you need is to calm down. Hi, Chrissy. Let me see if I can read this. Apples and bananas started giving me terrible stomach pains when I eat them every time. However, I found out I have autoimmune atrophic gastritis. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, a gastritis is inflammation of the gastrointestinal gastrointestinal system. Um, I don't even know what that specific autoimmune condition is, but I don't, and I do hope that you know that your body's not attacking itself because that is a lie. It never will. It's attacking the problem. And the, the way to cure it, to heal it, is to eat foods that will attack the problem and not give you any side consequences, which would be fruits and vegetables and herbs. So those are the things. But bananas, super powerful gut healing food. Um, they, they contain good bacteria. They will go in and fight the bad bacteria. They smother it. They literally smother bad bacteria. So maybe that's what you're feeling. I don't know. I'm not like a quite so psychic with food. I'm like, get, I get, um, intentions or I get feelings about what's happening. Um, but anybody that has gastritis, it's a really overactive digestive system. And it, it feels like to me, irritation um quite irritated and so this is what i was telling my friend which um inspired this live stream so if apples because that was for her too apples make you feel um really sensitive like stomach pains and ibs well what you need is to understand that when your stomach becomes really overactive like that, where you're like running to the bathroom all the time, that's not just a gut issue, it's also a central nervous system issue. It also feels like heat to me, like excessive heat in the in the gut, in the body. Think of like raw nerve, like think of like, ner like when I was little, I swam into a swimming pool wall and I broke my front tooth off. And it just to me, it feels like dangling nerve endings that are very sensitive, but that's what's going on in your gut and the gut lining and in and around the gut. And so there is a lot of innervation there and that connects, of course, all the way through your spine, but to your brain. 
That's why we always talk about the gut-brain connection. And then it doesn't help when we make these mental associations with pain that we feel in our gut, right? But what you need, ultimately, is yes, you need fruits and vegetables to heal, but you also need an order of eating that allows this calming down, that allows this sort of like desensitization of the gut that's quite inflamed and heated and overactive. So what that means is, you need to cool down the nerves, you need to soothe them, you need to soothe the inner lining of the gut so that whatever feels hard to digest or difficult or aggravating, even though it's a good food, trust me, I know it is and you need these foods still, um, don't be scared of eating them, but you probably just need to eat in a little bit different order. And you also need to for sure be cleaning up all of this other stuff in your diet, all of this other stuff that um, could be contaminating this situation, keeping it active, when just avoiding a couple pieces of fruit or a couple kinds of fruit, that's not gonna be to your overall benefit because you're missing out on their power, but it's likely it's other stuff. And then it's not understanding how you can use other kinds of foods that are still healthy, that still will fight for you, but perhaps without the feelings of the symptoms. So this is why I love food so much and why it totally is medicine, right? Give me some hearts if you guys think food is medicine, uh, because it is. It's not even a choice. Um, so it's like with, with drugs, right? There's all these like side, side consequences and effects, like, oh, you might die. <laughs> You might die or you might get gas or well, like you're already I already have gas or whatever Especially like if you're talking to me you have low acid. Yep. This is what oh, all the people have low acid not enough b12 Researching supplementing Um, Yeah, so this is this is like so perfect that you're on here. I don't think we've ever even met before but um so supplementing first let me say go back to what i was going to say you need to eat cooling foods that will not aggravate the gut while you heal it so here's a few examples green juices green juices especially with lots of veggies in them are very alkaline they're cooling they're healing they don't ask your body to work hard to break stuff down they don't require a lot of stomach acid and at the same time they are likely helping you to build it if you have excuse me, if you have celery in there, that's a big one. And so that's why I started this live stream talking about how these people are saying that celery juice is like a myth or a trend when it is not the case. That is not true. It's not a myth, it's not a trend, and it will never go away. It works. If you drink celery juice and it makes you bloated, it's because it's working. It's because you've got stuff to work on and you're probably eating other things that are creating the trigger of the bloating. And in fact, I already know from, I just know when I watch certain people, like I know what they're doing and I know what the problem is and it's not the celery juice. So celery juice naturally raises hydrochloric acid. There's other foods that do that too. It's just one example. Um, so you don't have to supplement. And in fact, if you do supplement, it's not gonna be a perfect match. It's gonna throw your body's balance of proper digestive juices and fluids off because it's not the same as your body makes. It's only one little piece of it and therefore you're raising like different enzyme levels without it being a perfect match and then your body's gonna get a little bit off, off kilter or whatever that word is. Um, when it really just needs to do what it knows how to do on its own and for you to feed into that. Does that make sense? So your body is asking you, pay attention to me. I need different foods than what you've been doing. I need a different mindset than what you've been thinking. I need different a different environment from what you've been living. I need you to stop stressing out so much. When you have digestive stuff, you've got to like figure out where all the stress is coming from. All the like the anxiety, the like I don't know how to do stuff. I can't figure this out. Break it down, right? It's literally digesting stuff in life. So um, green juices are a really good example and celery juice is and always will be one of the best solutions for this. Kelsey can speak to this. Kelsey, are you still on here? Say something if you are, Kelsey. My hair is bothering me, you guys. Um, 
so Kelsey came to me and she's just like one of, I can think of like five people that I worked with that, um, couldn't, could not literally eat. Like no food would work. Their stomach hurt all the time and they just kept taking things away. And I don't think Kelsey was taking all things away, but she was, you know, consuming stuff that was making the healing not happen. Like whey protein. Whey protein is one of the worst things for your body. It doesn't do anything for you except damage stuff. So there's always stuff that's creeping in that you're like, no, I, I eat so well, I eat clean, I eat a good diet, um, or it's not that bad, but there always is an answer. The, the body works scientifically on things in a certain way. If you understand this, you're gonna be able to like just puzzle piece it together and fix it. So, um, green juice is one, um, and then I'll tell the story about Kelsey too. And melon is the other top recommendation. Aha, uh -huh, good, that will help. You just stopped whey protein, perfect. So, melons are pre digested, it's sort of like baby food, it's sort of like a juice that is already broken down. Do you guys know, you know how there's other ways you can help the digestive process like slowing down, not like shoving food in your mouth in front of the TV, mindful eating and things like that, chewing more. Well, if you pick a food that's already got some of the properties of digestion occurred, occurring, like cantaloupe or muskmelon, whatever you call it, um, watermelon, honeydew melon, it's like an, a soft easing nutritionally dense food that can go in without so much pain or activity, but it's still gonna heal. It's still gonna be all good and no bad. Just like an apple literally still is all good and no bad, but you're feeling the bit of the bad because of the health of your body, the state of your body right now. So we all come in with different levels of health in different areas of our body. And that's what dictates what symptoms we have and how we respond to certain things and how we respond to certain foods. So it's not right or wrong or better or bad or good or whatever, it's just the way that it is and then you get a heal from there. It's just information, it's just what do I need to do, what can I eat differently, what can I eat better in a different way maybe so that this gets worked out. So, um, like when Kelsey or my other clients have come to me and they like can't eat food, it, it doesn't mean you need to freak out. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be able to eat food again, like, and they've built their diets fully back up. Um, but it's just because it's been too long of a time where the body has been deprived of more of what it needs than what it doesn't need. And then we add on top of it all these layers of like, things in life that are hard, relationships, jobs that we don't really like, or friends that suck, or I don't know, anything that bothers you counts, and half, more than, I would say, no one's meditating, no one's doing things like that to actually tune in to who they really are, and to ask for guidance, and to release, for minutes, even a day, the symptoms, the pain, the situation of the, the health or the body that you don't want and, and focusing on what you do want instead. If you aren't doing those things, how can your body change? How can it change, you know? And, and then um, even with Kelsey, and I'm just telling this because she sent me her lovely testimonial and I put it up on my um, website yesterday so you can read the full thing if you want to. I didn't put the full, full thing because she it was long, but essentially she was saying how she was skeptical when she talked to me because I was sort of like, she just kept getting passed on to different people, going to like Mayo, going to different gastroenterologists, even going to different um, nutritionists. And then, then somehow ended up on the phone with me and I was the one that's saying, oh yeah, it's what you're eating. And super holistic, right? You guys know how I am. Like I believe you can heal anything and you don't need medicine and drugs. Um, and of course I know there's certain instances where it's necessary, but that's not what we're talking about here. But she didn't know if I was a like crazy person, I kind of think I am a crazy person, but I have crazy faith. 
in food and health and healing. So she was just saying like, yeah, I was skeptical, but I knew in my gut that it was what I needed to do. And that's it. You guys, you always have to trust your own intuition. You always have to trust your own gut and think how much stronger that intuitive sense will be when you have a healthy gut that's not crabbing at you and causing you pain when you eat stuff. It's super crystal clear when you get that inflammation gone. Your body is telling you stuff every day. I mean, we have to eat multiple times a day and you're supposed to tune in and ask your body what it wants and needs. But it's really hard when we've never been taught this and we've never been taught to understand what our symptoms are and that they're not scary death sentences and, and we can't change anything because we can. We have to remember, it's like a, a little bit of like re-education and learning. Oh, food heals. Okay, well I wish I knew, I knew how. That's, that's what I'm teaching. That's what I believe and that's what I want you to know. That you can take your power back and then heal yourself. So the big shifts always come when you get that it's not only about the food. Like Kelsey said, she started to tune in and tap into the other healing energies of the food. And it's not just that these healing energies are in only food. They're all around us and they're in us. Our cells are ready for us to attune to the higher vibrations, to access this higher frequency that comes from a source greater than us. And it's not just like, oh, you're screwed if you don't eat raw vegan no i mean no no it's not that simple but it is a tool and an access point where we forget that it is it's a huge access point and so we can learn that that is available to us when we eat in a certain way because we want to eat in a certain way because we have a desire to heal in such a strong way then we can tune into it every time we eat right but if we disregard that or we don't account for that or we don't even know about that, we're missing out there. But the bigger shift came for her when she realized that, that there is a greater source that wants us to be well and we don't have to try to control it. We can't control it. We're here to do our part. We're here to learn and then choose the best best that we can choose based on the guidance we're receiving. Maybe the guidance you're receiving is coming from within you. Maybe it's coming from me. Maybe it's coming from a program you take. But whatever it is, your job is to listen to it, to trust what you know is true, and, and get rid of the stuff that's based out of fear. The stuff that's saying you can't heal your IBS no matter what you eat. That is literally what she wrote in her testimonial that doctors at the Mayo Clinic told her, no, lies, lies, you guys. This is not true. So that's based out of fear, right? There's no solution, there's no answer, you can't do anything about it. Don't believe anybody that ever says you can't do anything about anything. They don't know, that's not true. That's not true. So if it doesn't feel right for you, that shouldn't feel right for anyone to be told you're hopeless, food doesn't matter, you know, bullshit. It doesn't, that's not true, right? So she thankfully, luckily could trust her own gut to know that here I was, I might be saying the opposite of what everyone else is saying, but I'm saying you can heal. I'm saying you can change. I'm saying that it will work. It can also happen by the pesticides. Yeah, of course. It's a contributing factor to all of us, whether we feel sick or not. Like, it's it's no good, you guys. And, and apples are such a good food to eat, as an example we've been talking about, to get rid of stuff like that. However, if you eat a conventional apple, you're just contributing to the problem. Food affects everything, totally. Yeah, it does. It's just this huge, like, Thing. It's like this huge piece of our culture that isn't safe even. I was tagged on this thread on Facebook over the weekend and it was this guy, he's like an online business some coach I think and one of my coaching friends tagged me because he was talking about how, I think they're from Turkey, his wife was sick from living here for a short time, like her face got all puffy 
When she goes home, it's not. When she's here, she's sick. And he was just like very angry that our own government wasn't protecting us, you know, protecting our food. And like where in the world do we basically get safe food was what he was asking. So um, it's, it's very relevant. It's very needed to know this stuff and to then choose and then to choose wisely. But back to this main point, if fruit and vegetable is affecting your stomach negatively, it's not the fruit and vegetable that's a problem. Perhaps if it's a conventional fruit or vegetable, it could be like Revital just said, pesticides and herbicides and that kind of stuff on the fruit is a problem, you know? It happened to too many foreigners. Right, yeah, it's the exact same thing that happens to my husband when we were in Italy for um, the conference in Florence. He was eating pasta, totally fine. If he's in the United States, he can't do that. We don't buy anything that's not gluten-free, and I don't buy much grain at, grains at all. You know, it's just the food is different. It's not pure, and that's literally affecting so many people's digestive systems, and nobody knows how to heal. But don't let anybody tell you that eating apples is wrong or eating fruit is wrong or if you experience that. Just know that that's not what's wrong. What's wrong is there are just things within the physical body that are not flowing, they're not healing, they're not accessing the, they don't, your body doesn't have the ability to even know how to break down an apple or a banana or because that apple and banana's main job is being directed into an activated fight against a bacteria or a virus or you know something inside of you, it's battling for you as its first priority instead of just being easily broken down. It can't happen. You can't have the easily broken down, smooth, fast, quick digestive system where you know, it's in and out, fl everything flows and you feel fine and you feel great and you have the energy. You can't have that if you have too many toxins and you can't have that if you have um, an overgrowth of bad bacteria and you can't have that if you have toxic stored heavy metals in your body floating around anywhere in your gut, your brain in your fat cells, where, wherever they are. Nobody doesn't have this. It's just to the degree of like how well you're feeling right now and how are you handling it and what are you doing about it, you know? That's, that's, where, it, that's where it is and that's basically what we're gonna have to learn as Americans for sure is we're gonna have to know how to eat. We're gonna have to know how to protect ourselves and we definitely need to know how to eat to heal ourselves so we can take back our power and not feel you know, like we are um, at the consequence of the system and doctors who say we can't do anything if we have IBS. You know, that's like the easiest thing to heal, you guys. That's why I made this the course that I made, which I want to talk about. So Kelsey's one of my clients that went through it and that was as it was like being like <laughs> upgraded, I would say, to the way that I know things now. So. You don't need a food sensitivity test, right? You don't need that. It's all in, It's all intuitive with the way that the body works, the way the gut works. So what I do know for sure is how to heal the digestive system naturally with food. And I can tell you where in your current diet it's off and what you need to do to shift. And then there's this way that we ease back into eating. So one, we have to cut all the irritation. We have to make sure our body's producing enough hydrochloric acid. We have to know the way that the body breaks food down. We have to be aware of it. And then we have to eat in a certain way that allows relief in the system, relief in the body. So you can get rid of the bloating, you can get rid of the IBS, you can get rid of the diarrhea, you can get rid of the inflammation, then your body will release the weight. That's what it's waiting for. It can't it can't even prioritize weight loss when your gut's all wrecked. It just can't. There's an order. There's an order of healing. There's an order of health. And you don't even have to know exactly like, okay, I'm eating this banana right now and it better go to here, here, here. No, like your body knows that. But but what I, I'm like a food guide. <laughs> I can tell you like where to, where to eat. And then, and then we just have to work on doing it, getting it, getting it in your house getting it accessible, making it easy enough so that you can do this to heal even though you're busy, even though you've got your own business, even though you have jobs, even though you have kids and husbands, right? Lately I told my mom the food here isn't food so I just stay away from most of it. 
She asked me to come home right away. Oh, I'm sure she wants you to come home. Yeah, but also, um, you sort of have to also have like a don't F with me attitude about the food too because I'm doing the best I can and that's enough. It has to be enough. Like, because I'm not going to go like move to Europe, at least right now. Maybe I'll vacation there for the summer. But, you know, the body is strong and overriding just the food is the health of our mind, the health of our expectations and our thoughts. And it's so important that you know, I get to be healthy, I get to eat well, this gets to be enough, and I get to choose to be healthy, right? I get to choose to heal, I get to choose to be more than healthy, I get to, be cho I get to choose to be healthy and lean and fit and toned and strong and energetic, all of it, you do. You get to choose and it's not like there's some secret you know, magical diet, but, but there's intricacies, you know, based on what you have showing up. And essentially what I'll say to you guys is what I always say. It's like, you have to pay attention to how your digestive system works first. You have to know that it's just flowing and it's like, I got you so that everything else can then be taken care of too. Because just imagine like Ravitel is saying, if you know that even some of the organic food isn't pure, you know, because stuff blows in the air. You guys, seeds blow, stuff blows around. Um, if you know that that's not true, that's just one tiny way, think about it, that we're exposed to chemicals and toxins every single day because we eat every single day. What about your water? Do you know that there's no fluoride in it? What about the air? Do you know that like there's still radiation like dripping from past events? I mean, don't freak out, but there is. And do you know, like, is there lead in your lipstick? Do you know what you're putting in your lotion, you know, or your face? That's everyday stuff. And so that means that that's the work of your elimination organs. The digestive system is one of those. But if it already can't even let you eat an apple without pain, how well do you think your liver is doing? Not that great. It's just a burden. So you have to unburden your body every single day in all the things that you choose. That's why this movement, this food movement, it's a movement into seeing things with open eyes. It's a movement into seeing things that, wow, I don't think our government maybe is protecting us the way that we need to be. There's all these things slipping through the cracks. There's all this food on the shelves that's actually causing me harm. There's all these products on the shelves that actually are toxic to my body if I put on my face. So if you decide that organic food matters, if you decide that what you eat matters, you're gonna also have to decide that what you clean your house with matters, the makeup that you use matters, the skincare that you use matters, your shampoo matters, everything counts because your body doesn't say like, oh, well, the food is enough, but you know, bombard me and go live in a city that has lots of pollution, you know, no, it's not going to work like that. Like you have to do everything you can just be aware, you know, just be aware. So, um, my program, if you are interested in knowing how to do, whoa, I have a different video open. If you want to know about this, if you want to know how you can heal autoimmune stuff that your body's not attacking itself, I don't care what any functional medicine doctor tells you, it's not true. Um, how to heal your gut, stop being bloated, lose the weight, get rid of the joint pain, clear up your skin, feel good, have the energy, live your life, figure out what you want to even be doing because your body is a distraction. It's usually part of the reason, right, that we get stuck in these conditions is sort of stuff we're not looking at. We're not being who all we can be. Um, that's not alignment. So it's looking at all these parts. But my program's called the Pure Path because that's what it is. Simple, plain, and true. The purest path to heal yourself without, you don't need thousands of supplements, right? You don't need all these products. You need to know how to eat and you need to do it. And you need to be able to sit your butt down and think the right thoughts. Okay, I got the low carb cake from the Cheesecake Factory and I had side effects. Yeah, cheesecake. I'm sure there's dairy in there for sure. Yeah, yeah, somebody commented on my post because I had said something like dairy. Dairy is not helping. 
And then there's people that think like organic dairy and like raw dairy is fine. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it's not. It's just one of those other myths. I can do a whole live stream on dairy for you guys. I can do a whole live stream on apple cider vinegar. I can do a whole live stream on um, kombucha, fermented foods. Those are the myths, not fruits and vegetables. Don't, don't believe that, okay? So the, the Pure Path, I'm gonna run it live again. We're starting in like about two weeks. And um, yeah, it's really good. So you'll understand how to heal your gut. You'll understand how to move through eating in this way so that your body has relief, your body has healing. You'll understand the effects of your mind. You'll understand the effects of energy, how to tap into the other parts of food that allow for better, faster, further healing. And then just the other energies that are available to us from God, from source, that, um, that also helps us come into who we really are, into our purest form of health. And then, like Revitel keeps talking about chemicals, um, there's a section on um, all the other chemicals, like how we need to detoxify consistently and regularly. And that has like, there's all kinds of things to do in that from like drinking juices at certain times, right? And how often to sweating, you know, to using saunas, to sweating, to um, dry brushing to all these things that move through the lymph. Um, it's all part of it. Like it's just stuff we have to do, you know, to really tune into, to our fullest, um, place of health. So uh, let's see, I'll put the link in. Oh, I wonder if I can do that. Does anyone have questions right now? Let's see. But yeah, you should go check out Kelsey's. I'll maybe post part of it, her testimonial made me so happy to read because I just remember how, can you imagine you guys how scary it is if you can't go anywhere or do anything because you don't know what your stomach's gonna do, you don't trust food, you lose your social life, you're like laying in bed because, you know, pain. This is happening to a lot of people. But I just want everyone to know how to fix it. It's like there's this small little way, there it is, that you have to find your own path. That's why I called my course this, the pure path. You have to find and navigate your own little pure path where it's not so pure out there. But it's really not that complicated once you understand. It's not meant to be complicated. Oops. Okay, I think I can pin this. Pin. So remember, you can try, oops, there we go. Try some melons, try some juices. Oh, we did it twice, whoops. Um, clean up the chemicals and yeah, and see how you feel, okay? So check it out. Um, send me a message if you have questions and Send me a question, post some comments if you watch the replay and you have any other topics you want me to discuss for you, I'm happy to do it. Okay, bye guys, talk to you soon.